sec, give it a sec, we should be live pretty soon. Alright, looks like it is on. Yep, here we go. Looking good on the internet, sort of. Okay. Hello? Alright. We have picture and we have sound. Hello, party people. Welcome to the Yakuza Zero stream. My name is Allie. I'm from OK to Be Fat because it is OK to Be Fat. And this is your Yakuza stream. Oh my goodness, I have the 15 million. Hmm. I need. I need to. I think. I need to get like more money than that. I think. Hmm. Where am I? <sighs> All right. Let's go. I'm just having a little bit of a frustrating day. <sighs> Ooh. Look at that. That is built. Wow. Hey, Foxy. Oh, there he goes. Hi, you coming up here? You can if you want to, stream cat. Hi. Hey, it's that Aaron Coon looking down and out, dejected. Did his feet get worse on him? Hey, buddy. Oh, no. I am so screwed. Hey, what's wrong? I've seen dumpsters happier than you. Oh, that voice. Hello again. It's my sneakers. The souls have finally worn through. They do look beat to crap. Mm. Yes. They're my favorite pair. I can't even go buy a new pair like this. Mm. He needs new shoes, huh? I'd give him some. I ain't exactly in the habit of carrying a spare pair. Huh. What am I gonna do? Don Quixote carries sneakers, if I remember right. Maybe I'll get him a pair if I feel like it. This is not the usual stream day. Um, normally we stream on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but today it's on Tuesday because yesterday we um, took Sparkles to the vet. Um, she is an older lady. Can I go back here? I'm like, are there, are there telephone cards in here? This is information I would like to have. I'm like, no. Okay. Cool. Hi, sweetie. I have to pet the cat. It's very, very important. Hi, babies. You had a nice day. We had a little bit of a frustrating day. Okay. Don't lean on me. Sneakers. That's what I want. I be. Wait, did y'all have any bait? I don't remember where you get the bait from. Anton, hi. How are you? I don't think it's here. I think the bait is at the convenience store. How's your day? I'm having a little bit of a frustrating day, but it's now that I'm here, back at Indiacus Zero, everything's like it should be. 
We're gonna have a nice fun stream. Hi, hi, Foxy. It's headbutt in me. Huh. What am I gonna do? Poor guy's shoes gave up the ghost. He had a pair of sneakers on me. But do I give them to him? Good thanks. How about me? Um, I don't know. I just like. I just have some like frustrating things going on and like part of the core of the frustrating things that I have going on is that like just as like a person I am not like considered credible like as someone else would be and I know that because I've just like seen it in action and it just doesn't seem to matter how good my track record is or how good I am at my job or how good I am at anything like it doesn't it's never enough to like overcome that like well you don't look like a person we should listen to so we're not gonna and it's just like I was right a bunch of times before but sure and you know that's just <coughs> it's a lot kind of hard. Huh? I can have these? Really? Thank you so much. I'll put them on right now. <sighs> I just like... Also, like, our cat is, um, sick, so that's just kind of hard. Um, wow, these sneakers are great. They feel wonderful. These are the latest style, too, aren't they? Oh, man. Are they cool. I should go for a run in them. It would be a waste not to. <sighs> hey, did you forget the whole reason you got into this mess? Think you ought to take it easy, maybe? Oh, oh that's right. Uh, I couldn't contain myself. I'm so happy. <laughs> huh. Getting happy makes you want to run? That's a thing? Haha, <laughs> 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 I hear that all the time. I was on the track team in college. Running is my, running is in my blood. You're a strong runner then, I take it. Hi. Yes, I am. But I've been running too much without taking the proper precautions. And that's how I ended up injured. Let me guess. You're still running errands. Hey. Yeah. I can't stand the thought of not seeing her happy. Oh, I'm keeping her waiting. I have to go. Thank you so much for these sneakers. Well, at that pace, he'll end up hurting himself again. So, that's not quite done yet. That's... Hello, do you have bait? No. Only the M store have bait? These are the questions that I have. <clears throat> it's like, you know what? I'll just take a little. Yeah, why not? Just go up there, grab some bait, maybe fish a little bit. I don't know. I'm noticing that in the, like, um, character model that they have his sort of, uh, Bait! Yes! Nice! Yep, it's this M store. I was like, I wonder if it's just the M stores, because I know there's M stores and Poppos. So, um, it turned out I was right. Ha! Like when he's just kind of standing, like, um, he's got like just real kind of tense posture. I think that's really interesting. A kind of cool story choice. Oh shit! There's the guy. Oh! 
Is it that? Yeah, it's that street performer guy. Drew himself a good-sized audience, too. Nice to see. Huh? Ah! Hmm? Ah! Hmm? Ah! What's he doing? Making smoke signals? I better get closer and see what's up. So weird, isn't it amazing? Yo, Chokokichi, you're pulling in a good crowd. Yes, it's been good at least. I think they're like, psychically communicating. So, you seem to be trying to tell me something there. What's up? Yes, I, uh, I need to use the restroom. Oh, man. Mama, why is that man talking to the statue and getting... Psychic responses? Shh. He's just a little different. It's rude to stare. Psst. Thanks to you, the people think I'm a nut job. Sorry, but you're the one talking to a statue. So why are you calling me over about your, uh, problems? There's a pizza place right over there. Why not make a beeline for their crapper? No way. I can't do that. There's a little kid watching. If he saw a statue suddenly come to life, he might be traumatized for life. I mean, bro, you are moving around a bit. I guess that's true. I don't want to shatter that boy's dreams. But I do need to go relieve myself. My eyes are floating. What should I do? Hey, man. Ignoring nature's call never ends well. Why don't you just sneak off when the little tight ain't watching? Sneak off when he's not looking. Th that's it! What? I, I had a bad feeling about this. I really hate to ask, but can you distract these people? Just long enough for me to sneak off to the pizza place. Who, me? Yes, you. Naturally, I'll compensate you for your trouble. I'm sure you can do it. I don't know why, but I just know. But, please... If I don't go soon, I'll traumatize more people here than just that boy. Hmm. What to do? I I will help him. Fine, fine. I'll help you. I expect you to make good on this if I pull it off, though. Of course. Thank you. Oh, we're about to have an epic time. Okay, how do I get these folks' attention? I guess I can try raising my voice. Wail like a banshee. Well, alright. I'll try wailing like a banshee. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Mama? What's the matter with that man? Shh. Don't look at him. Look, look, see the statue? Well, this is about as mortifying as it gets. What now? Let's go with the UFO sighting. Not the most creative approach, is it? Isn't it, though? Isn't it create? I think it's pretty creative. Hey, what's that? Up in the sky. Look. It's a UFO. Uh -huh. huh? A UFO? Where? A UFO? There. Now's your chance to... Uh, Taco Kitchi. Taco Roll. <sighs> what the heck? There ain't no UFO up there. Eh, forget it. The statue's the real deal. Huh? What? Am I imagining things? Wasn't that statue over this way a bit more? Well, at least he managed to scoot a little. What to do next? Hmm, maybe a little performance would draw their interest. 
obviously we sh now is the time when we dance do the hustle of course yes fine I'll dazzle him with my dancing behold the Lord of the dance is right behind ya from the disco to the streets witness a dance of the ages <laughs> I'm just gonna let that play out for a bit <laughs> there he goes who am I kidding <laughs> A dancer needs music. Huh, I worked up a good sweat though. So, what's left to try? Um, sing a song. Alright, time to debut my singing chaps. Out of the blue, I bring my singing to you. Sunaoni, I love you. Oh! Haha! -ha. You gotta be brave to break out singing a cappella in public. You got pipes, buddy. Oh! I think I know this song. Now's your chance, Takokichi! Haul your ass! Huh. Acapella's not that exciting, though. Back to the statue! <laughs> huh? You... You ding-dong, you're facing the wrong way! Ah! Mama? Statue-san has turned around! I wasn't imagining it. The statue is moving! Crap. His cover's blown. Now what? Hey, One-Eyed Willy, you're annoying as hell. Hmm? Quit your... Quit your singing. What's wrong with you, man? Are you some kind of street idol? Listen, pal. Trust me on this one. I ain't singing because I want to. Bullshit. I saw you prancing around. You enjoy being, uh, foolish, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of you for it. Oh, alright. I knew it would end this way. There's an umbrella! Okay. Yeah, pick him up. No, come on! Let me pick you up! Oh, come on! I almost had him! Ugh, rude. Ugh, come on back over here, guy. Come on. Come on! Yes! Oh! And there he goes! <laughs> Ooh. Nah! Rowdy critic, teach you to be a critic of me. I'm so sorry, please let me go. <sighs> Spineless blowhard. Wow, that was spectacular. What the? Wow, man, you rocked it, buddy. That was awesome, mister. You were like one of those heroes on TV. Whoa, I don't know how I did it. I got everyone's attention on lockdown. Now, Chokokichi, escape! There, 
He made it to the Pizza Palace porcelain throne. What? The statue! It's gone! Huh? It is gone. How did that happen? Mama, where did Satchu-san go? I... I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. Hmm, so weird. But I guess I got a free show out of it, so fine by me. Oh no, I'm meeting someone. I have to run. We should be on our way too. Yeah, but that was fun. There, guess that's the end of that. Oh, that's that guy. I gotta go see him at the pizza place, I believe. Yeah, there he is. Hello. Ah, my savior. Yo, did you make it to the crapper in time? Yes, you were so good at distracting everyone. I made it before the potty emergency got real. Crisis averted. Is that so? Glad to hear it. Gotta hand it to you, though. It ain't an easy thing holding people's attention. That's the truth. People think it's easy to draw attention to yourself, but what they don't understand is how hard it is to hold it once you've got it. Mm-hmm. You street entertainers are something else. That's music to my ears. When I hear recognition like that, it makes it all worthwhile. It's not much, but please take this with my thanks. Yeah, stamina more out. By the way, you get a real talent for performing in public yourself, you know. I don't know about that. No, you really do. You have an air about you that really holds people's interest. Your action-packed performance at the end was the icing on the cake. It was so amazing, I just couldn't look away. It was so inspiring that I almost forgot to sneak off. But that brawl wasn't a performance. It really was spectacular. It made me realize how much more I need to grow as a performer. You inspired me to keep working hard at this. Well, thank you very much. I hope you keep honing your performance chops, too. Let's both keep bringing smiles to people's faces. Hey, I told you, I'm no entertainer. <laughs> well, there goes an odd duck. She got to respect that it ain't easy making people laugh or bringing them joy. Being an entertainer is as tough as any other business. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, I'll use the item box, so put the spade away. What I'm going to do, is, well, first I'm going to get this telephone card, uh, the I, uh, Uihara Taipei card. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to, let's go to the Grand. Everybody ready to go to the Grand? Because you're going to the Grand. So we gotta go to the Grand to get the last fighting style, and I want Breaker, so that's what we're doing. So I can get Breaker, because that's what I want. Oh god, it's the Obatarian again! Hmm? Uh. Help! Pervert! There's a pervert here! Uh. You old shitbag! Who are you calling a pervert? <laughs> ha! You fell right into the Obatarian's trap. Oh. oh. You hag! Now you're really gonna get it! Oh shit, he pulled a knife on that granny! Whoa, now he's crossed the line! Ah! Nobody gets cute with the Yakuza bitch! Suck on this! Uh oh. <gasps> what? Who the fuck are you? The eye patch fella. Hey, I know this old lady's a real pain in the ass. But don't, that don't give you the right to pull a blade on a civilian. Huh? Huh? Hey, buddy. I know how you feel. I really do. I got accused of being a perv, too. But it ain't worth it. Trust me. Let's sleep in dog's leg. You're no match for the Obatarian. Hell, I ain't either. You trying to tell me what to do? You mosey up to me and tell me I'm no no match for some old hag? You don't know shit, friend. It's 
two of you can share a grave. Wow, that escalated. Street ruffians. I'm gonna hit you with this bat until you're sorry. Yeah! And now you're sorry. Because who wouldn't be? The bounce of contrition. You... You ain't bad. Praise is cheap coming from a chump. Now get lost. Shh. No, no. You're the bee's knees, eye patch fella. I ended up coming to your rescue without even meaning to. I kinda hate myself right now. Well, on closer inspection, you're a fine piece of work. Just like my husband was when he was still kinda grabby? Mmm, I don't know about grabby. My heart's really pounding. Whoa, dial it down. You are creeping me out, lady. No need for any feminine wiles. Oh, but I've got to repay you to set things right. Fuh. Keep your candy, lady. I don't need the sugar high. Oh, I had something else much sweeter. It's something in mind much sweeter than candy. Huh? Come to granny, you fine, handsome devil. Wow. This is this is a hell of a thing that's happening. Whoa! She's too strong. I can't hold her off. This is Come on, y'all. Granny, don't do it. Oh. Come on, y'all. Consent is important. Ugh. Pop the cork too early. S no. No. Get a room, you two. Oh, please. Don't te- oh. Guy at the counter was right. The only thing to be gained from getting involved with an Obertarian is misery. The toughest creature under the sun sure ain't a pro fighter, and it ain't a Yakuza. It's the Osakan Obertarian. All right. Can I eat? I don't think so. Oh, that's not there. Well, I'm gonna try to eat just to see if I can, and then I'm gonna go to the ground. I don't think so, though. Okay. Alright, fine. Oh, wait, I forgot to look. Okay, no. I'm good. Alright, cool. Uh, let's go to the Grand. I got turned around. No, I'm, I went the wrong direction. I always forget. I know this, but I always forget that the fights, when you come out of them, they always point you in the opposite direction from whatever direction you were facing to start with. And I know that, and yet every time I'm just like, do do do, and I just head, head off in the wrong direction every single time. And like, Every time. It is absolutely just every time. Is there nothing back here? Just looking for cards for the phone. Telephone cards. Okay, nothing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, and let us go to the grand. Four hundred yen for a taxi and three hundred for a fatty piece of tuna sounds like a scam or something. Good morning, sir. And again, thank you for managing to strike a deal with Odyssey yesterday. Just doing my job. Now it's up to you guys to keep this place on the upswing. Still, that was quite the surprise to wake up to. 
Why didn't you tell me two other girls were coming besides Nozomi? Two what now? Sure. Neither one is at Nozomi's level, but they're both veterans and fantastic draws for the club. With any luck, they'll bring all their old regulars straight to us. We gave up some of our girls in the trade, but there's no denying we came out on top here. Last night's negotiations must have been something to behold. Well, I did a fair bit of research beforehand. As long as you get a little dirt under your belt, you pretty much wing the rest. That may be true for you, sir. It's no wonder they call you the Lord of the Night. Looks like my little talk with Yamagata went better than I thought. Probably could have stuck it to him even harder, though. Get a few more girls out of him. Guess I could have done more research or given the club a better look to get a few more cards in my hand to play with. No sense worrying about it now, though. Fine game. I guess I didn't talk to everybody. <laughs> Now, if this is a good time, I'd like to work out the new shift schedule. Sure. Telephone for you, sir. Um, when I asked who was calling, he just said the owner? I'll handle it. お前ちょっと今から出られないか。な。いやさ、お前と飲みたくなってよ。どういう風の吹き回しや。あいにく。あんたと酒飲むくらいなら自分の正面飲む方がまだ。やめとけ。あんまりうまいもんじゃねえ
It's my feet. They're killing me again. I think I can walk again if I rest a while, but... <sighs> can't say I didn't warn you, right? <sighs> yes, you did. I'm sorry. Don't tell me you're running errands again. Yes, I am. I have to deliver this absorbent sheet in a hurry. <sighs> what am I gonna do? You got a major injury worse, didn't you? If you explain why you're late, she'll understand, won't she? Your favorite story, um, Yakuza story was, um, YK, do you mean Yakuza Zero? Um, oh, I mean, I love the story in this game a lot. Um, I really like the whole, um, one and two, kind of how they pair together. I think that's really cool. Um... Yeah, I think, like, going from 0 into Kwame 1 and then into 2, although the pacing in 1 is a little strange because the game, you know, is old and stuff, but, um, I thought, like, just the kind of flow-through from that was, like, really cool and beautiful. Um, especially going from, like, 0 into 1, um, and the way that they developed Nishiki's character, I, I just think that was, like, super, super well done, because, like, it's this grand tragedy right like it is this tragedy of watching someone that they that they like really make you love make understand like kind of under either understandable in the situation or understandable for him as a character just like decisions that are just bad and then just wrong and bad and wrong and then just spiral 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 and it is just this, like, terrible tragedy. Um, and there's something so, like, sad and heartbreaking about it that is, like, it's like a real tragedy. Um, I keep saying tragedy, but it's tragedy in, like, a sort of Shakespearean sense. And that really is, um, I think, so, like, amazing and well done. Um, yeah, so I think that's, like, my favorite. Um, I, I don't know about how, like, Yakuza 6 ends. I'm still kind of grappling with it. Because, you know, I have sort of the same kind of issues with it that I think a lot of people have with it. But I kind of want to sit with my reaction and see how I feel about it, like, um, over time. Rather than just being like, oh, I don't like how it ended. I'm like, I feel mixed about how it ended um although i do keep like whipping around and being like he wrote a letter to daigo daigo um <laughs> but <laughs> we've moved on to judgment we decided to play judgment and then um i think probably after judgment we'll do seven and it's like we've been playing judgment for like two or three days now and i'm like just now starting to not be mad at Yagami for not being Kiryu. <laughs> I'm like, you're not Kiryu, and I don't want it. And it's just like, no, he's not. This is a different thing. And I'm like, mm, I don't, I don't like it. I want, I want Daddy Kiryu back. This is not good. And so I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble moving on. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited to come back here to the beginning. So that I'm like, well, I can go be with Kiryu and Majima on stream days. Yeah. I just, like, I guess I think that, like, an ending where he sort of... I don't know. It's like... it. There's a couple of different places where characters... Because, like, Majima does that too where they like sort of separate themselves from people that they love in order to protect them and like a lot of times this is why I'm like mixed on it as an ending because like a lot of times when that happens like it's flimsy a little bit like there's there's like oh no like it's this like martyr thing um and a lot of pieces of storytelling don't pull that off I think very well because it's like you know people in your life don't get to have a say you know or whatever and, and and so like it's like sort of unilaterally making a decision to pull yourself out of a situation but on the other hand it's like 
you are allowed to decide what relationships you want to have. Like, you know, but then when it comes down to, like, a child, it's just, like, I'm, like, your children want you home. Like, you know, this, like, sort of absent dad thing where it's, like, I have to protect you by leaving. Like, is that better? I don't know. I'm still grappling with it. Um, you got and made your injury worse, didn't you? If you explain where you're late, she'll understand, won't she? But she said she has plans. If I don't get it to her in a hurry, I might miss her. It's like, I don't want to say that I think that, like, it was a bad ending. I know that people were kind of upset by it. Because it is kind of, like, emotionally upsetting. But it, like... It... Almost should be kind of because like this is their protect like their the Kiryu has been like so much of the series that to like take him out of being the main character or being you know they did show in four and five that they could use other characters and stuff but it's just like it's a big thing to for them to have done um oh Miss Travel hi it's yeah it's uh Yakuza 6 um it's it's such a big thing for them to have decided to like end this like terribly popular character and i think that is like creatively very um bold and i love a bold creative choice even if it emotionally feels sad you know and that it feels like sad and i and i'm like no i don't want it but you know i think it's such they, they do, like, they, not only did they, like, decide to leave, you know, cure you behind, but, like, they, with, you know, Seven, they're on a whole different kind of play style because they've moved to a JRPG. And so I just, I think you don't see a lot of experimentation in, um, and trying different things in games of this, like, triple-a kind of caliber i think that we're sega is kind of allowing um rgg studios to make like bold creative choices and i think that we don't see a lot of that in um our bigger video games we get it in indie video games but like at least in the west we don't see that as much everybody's kind of copying everybody else and so even though um even though it made me really sad and like I'm like no I my no I love him um like I think that making these like interesting decisions is like um it's really cool cuz you don't see it as much oh, you don't like the turn base um Anton hi um I love a JRPG so I'm sure I'll be pretty happy with it when we get to Oh, when we get to it. I mean, my biggest, like, thing with Judgment is, like, I can't get a read on Yagami as a character, and I wonder if it's just that we're not far enough into the game yet, because he seems a little smug, and, like, I'm like, where's the goofy? Where's the goofy stuff? And so I kind of haven't seen as much of that yet, but, like... Um, also, there's no karaoke, which, like, <laughs> that's my favorite thing. So, I don't know. Um, I see. Um, maybe, if you have time, do you think you could deliver this absorbent sheet to her? What? I had to run an errand so she can wipe her face? I'm sorry. Is it too much to ask? The idea of me running an errand is flat out banana pants, but I'd like a peek at the girl who's making him do all this. She must be some kind of special. Just gonna run Aaron Coon into the ground at this rate. Maybe I can set her straight. Alright, I'll do it. <sighs> you don't think it represents Yakuza as a franchise? Um, well, I mean, I haven't had a chance to play that one yet, so I can't really comment on it, except that, like, um, you know, when artists feel like they've kind of 
done what they can in a certain kind of area then it's good to be able to try to like freshen it up by doing different stuff but it's also hard because you you know there's like they must have been worried that they they had to have been worried that it would put people off but they did it anyway which i think is like it's a really like kind of you know as i said like bold decision huh? you will uh. sure so where's your sweetheart at Thank you so much. She's waiting on the footpath along the river on the Sottenbury Street side. Got it. The river footpath on Sottenbury Street side. Rest up so you're good enough to walk. Hi. I will. Thank you. Here's her absorbent sheet. You got an absorbent sheet. I mean, there are some some versions of the combat I certainly like more than uh. others. Um, I don't think that, like, I'm very wild in my you know I have the same problems with three that like everyone kind of <laughs> had with it um in that the the blocking is is just god awfully tedious um <laughs> I'm Aaron Coon's Aaron boy now oh are there any cats in Yakuza um boy are there ever in six like you get to get round up cats for a cat cafe amazing i don't know i'd be willing to give dead souls a try um i don't think i can though i don't have a ps3 <laughs> I mean that is the run. Yeah, it's it's a great mission. You buy cat food, you find cats and you feed them, and then the cats trust Kiryu because they know that he is a special, trustworthy boy. And um, and then you can go in. Oh, then you can go into the cat cafe and pet the cats. Where is that? Ah. You got the Kakoa Aisu type B card. Alright, who's getting mugged? Where. What's happening? Where are you? Okay. Stop mugging that guy! Help me. This ain't a show. Get lost, or we'll kick your sorry ass. I will intervene. It should be a feature in every game. Listen. At the very least, if you're gonna have cats, you have to let people pet them. Like, those are the cat rules. I'll, n <laughs> I'll never lose to a butt ball like you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Tough Guy, you're gonna regret this so bad. I doubt it. I mean, there's, like, parts of each game that are not my favorite. Like, I don't like the rail shooter parts. I don't, like, because I'm just not very good at them. I don't like... What would I done without you? Thanks. Here's a little something for your trouble. You got a slightly battered iron gear. Um, <laughs> I don't really, like, dig the Coliseum fighting very much. Like, Josh gets really into it. I'm just like, eh, this didn't really do much for me. Butt ball. I thought the phrase was bubble butt. I mean, it, it very well might. It, it is. I'm not sh sure what he was referencing. Um, okay, I have 13 CP. Better value for your money. Alright, I need, I need more money. So that's what I'm going to head towards. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay, so, alright, I'm gonna go to Ashitaba Park, but first, I am gonna put in an agent, uh, search. Um, I mean, also, I would say that, like, I felt like, um, six felt a little short, but that also may have just... Oh, that's LaMarche. Um, that may just have been because we had just finished five, which is enormous. 
So, um, sometimes it's hard, it's hard to tell. I love the part where you walk around with, um, with the baby, Haruto, and then you, uh, here you, like, joggles him in a little joggling the baby minigame. I thought that was extremely adorable. Hello, what do you need? I'm going to... Wait, what can I get? Can you show me your lineup? Uh... Knives? Ooh. Iron hammer. Cleaving long lumber, slime gun, brass knuckles. Interesting. Modified lighter, I don't think it's very good. Tonfa. Nunchucks. Handguns. So I just like don't have a lot. Manga magazine. This magazine is read by both young and old. It is thick enough to provide some protection when equipped on your torso. There is a Majima business card in the weapon. It is a game usable by Kiryu. That's cool. Mail. Okay, comfy shoes. So I just, like, don't have anything, really. I can't craft anything. Because I don't... I don't, <laughs> don't have anything. Alright, so let's just... Let's go on a search. I want to send out an agent. All right. I think I remember that business card, and like, it's not bad. Okay. The Jackal, a rundown dive bar by a highway. They sell more shotguns than shots. Everything you can get in America is guns, which like checks out. Okay. Try that. Shirt, knuckles, jet black belt. Huh. Interesting. Bring like tour T-shirts are crafting items. That's interesting. Professional wrestler. Do I need driftwood? I probably need all of this stuff at some point. Alright, I just need to pick something. TV host. Uh, you shall go. You will be the one. What do I want? That's what I wanted. He is! He said he must be very young. Someone at RGG Studios really likes animating chickens. And does it in a very fun and funny way. And I I enjoy that very much. Because you got Nugget. You got the Chicken Races. In 5 with Shinada. Which is like the only way to get money. Oh no! Oh! Shaboom! Oh, here you go, bud. Yep. Yay! Alright. Well, I remembered. No, I did not. What am I doing? Okay. No. I thought I remembered and I was wrong. Okay. Pop, pop, pop. I see. Alright, gotta go to the park. There's a Shogi Man. Shogi Man, you will never see me. Vending! It's a dream machine. Insert 1 million yen to make your dreams come true. Maybe. I will. You paid 1 million yen. I did. Cool. I had one of those already, but it doesn't matter. Hear it. Oh, I see it. You got the Kyoko Maki Type C card. Very nice. Oh, I see another one right here. 
got the Nozomi Hazuki Type B card. Nice. God, you're black and blue. That's gonna be fun. Stop mugging people! What did I say? I said stop mugging people. Help me! This ain't a show. Get lost, or we'll kick your sorry ass. I've never lost to a butt ball like you. <laughs> butt ball. I'm using it. I'm gonna use it. Oh, Mr. Tough Guy, you're gonna regret this so bad. No, I will not, butt ball. Yes! Alright. Help 30 attack victims. You made your point. You won't ever do this again. That's right. What would I have done without you? Thanks. Here's a little something for your trouble. You got a slightly battered silver plate. Nice. Alright, so I do need to save. Because you gotta go talk to Sagawa. Um, uh, story stuff. I'm just gonna save before the story stuff. Even though I know it blacks it out. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, there's not really a whole lot I could do about it. I just need it to save. Uh, hmm. Stream looks a little weird. Is the stream okay? Huh. So, I'm looking at it on my laptop, and it is spinning. Let's see. No. Let's see if it's going. Come on. Oh, no. It's spinning. Okay, it's fine. Looks good. Alrighty. Um... Oh, he's at the... Uh, he's at the food cart. I hate this guy! Oh. Konaina toko ni yobi dashite nan no yo ya. So kamaeru natte. Omae to nomitai dake te itta ja nen ga. これ座れよ。何にせよまずは一杯やってからだ。ああ、マン。大丈夫。こいつにも適当に見繕ってやって。It is every two chapters, yeah. Konna goji se da. Juman suru fugu no kaisegi da no. Hyaku gramu ichiman no matsuzakagi o da no nanda no. Take mo arakata kutte kedo. Konna boroi yatai no hachiju en no daikon ga ichiman ume. Kane te no a ittai nan nan da ro na. I'm gonna get philosophical with you, buddy. No, he is not super happy to be here. It's like one of those, like... I don't know. God. Someone's, like, forcing you to hang out with them because they can. Drink a drink with you now. Fuck off. <laughs> they put so much into motion capturing these actors' faces that they're like actually able to like really act through this like, scenes, and I think that's really great. Damn, <sighs> 最初の一杯きり全然飲んでねえじゃねえか。あんたが横に寄って気持ちを飲めるか。もう<笑> 2年にもなるか。お前との付き合いも。<笑> 
なのにそういう反抗的なとこは変わんねえなあの島野の兄弟が何でお前みたいなやつを生かしておいてるんだかフフ<笑>まあわけわかんねえよな極道の世界で親に逆らったやつは必ず相応の報いを受けるもんだ波紋絶縁その辺ならまだいいなひでえ時には人知れずなぶり殺しにされることもあるお前は穴ぐらい切って言うその最悪のケースを踏んじまったはずなんだだが穴ぐらでの拷問に1年間も耐え抜いたお前を島野はあそこから出した耐えたお前のたくさも信じられねえけど何より一度穴ぐらに落としたやつをあの島野が救うとはなだが島野がお前を許したかといえばそうでもない穴ぐらから出たお前は波紋も絶縁もされずに極道の世界から追放されたそして大門違いの兄弟分である俺にお前を預け敵として飼うように指示をした武闘派と呼ばれる島野がなんでそんなに回りくどいことをしているのか奴の目的は一体何だろうなさあ俺が聞きたいくらい<笑>案外理由は単純でただ単にお前のケツの味が忘れられないだけなのかもしれねえな<笑> hate なんだよつまんねえやつだなそうだ一つお前に聞いてみたかったんだなんでお前そんなに登場会に戻りてんだお前みてえな跳ね返りがこんなバスに耐え続けてまで西島大河だっけかお前が登場会にいた時の兄弟分だっけそいつのためって言ってたよなの当時は大騒ぎになったもんだ登場会と敵対していた地元組織上野清和会の会合に単身襲撃結果相手組員18人を射殺したんだからよ登場会の生ける伝説こっちでも随分話題になったけどその冴島も今や無所の中18人もやったんだあとは死刑判決を待つだけだろうなのにお前はそいつのために登場会への復帰を望んでいるそこがわかんねえんだ兄弟は塀の中で死ぬような玉やないあいつは必ず戻ってくる俺を殺しにな殺しにあ何でもないもう過去の話やとにかく俺はどんな目に遭おうがどんな屈辱に遭おうが登場会でのし上がらなあかんねんほうなるほどねそうやって帰ってくるはずもない兄弟分の帰りを待ち続けてるってわけか登場会に戻って冴島が戻ってきた時の席を用意する必要があるっつ<笑>泣ける話じゃねえか See why I hate this guy? あんたには関係あらへんまあ俺も大門違いとはいえ島野の兄弟には仲良くさせてもらってるからなでもまあ俺だったら自分の人生の全てを捨ててまで他人のために生きる道を選択する気にはなれねえな That's cause you're not loyal. お前もいい大人なんだもっと器用に立ち回ってもいいんじゃないのかマジマス loyal。まあいいや。お前が俺に言われて素直に入って言わない男なら分かってる。じゃあ、お望みの本題に入ろうか。お前、人を一人殺せるか。殺しああ、そうだ。なんで俺がそんなのこと言ったじゃねえか極道に戻れるなら何でもやるってよ違うのか
そないなことせんでも俺は店の売り上げあと5億あげて極道に戻るオデッセイから望みを引き抜いてかもう知っとんのかけどさもし俺がオデッセイに連絡すりゃその話今からでもなかったことにできるんだよなんやと<笑>まあつまりお前の未来は俺の手の中にあるってことだ金儲けさせた上に人殺すまで手伝いっちゅうんかどっちも大事なことなんだよ俺にとってもお前にとっても誰をやればいいんや牧村誠聞いたことないか誰やそれ知らないか最近蒼天堀で荒稼ぎしてる売春組織の元締めだ売春牧村はそこらの女子大生やら若い女を捕まえては貸せませてその上がりを吸い上げてるその上組織から逃げ出そうもんなら見せしめに赤ん坊の埋めねえ体にされるってよ相手がクズでよかったなやりやすくなっただろうその牧村って男はどこにおるん I know. Don't you feel bad for Majima? 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 I know. ほんとはお前が狙われる立場になるいいなそら楽しみな殺しの方法はお前に任せる仕事を終えたらこの番号へかけろ分かった真島ちゃん最後に確認しておくぞ殺しに人数や相手は関係ねえ一人殺そうが
sworn brother Sajma were supposed to pull off a hit where they were supposed to kill 18 people and Majima didn't show and so Sajima did it by himself and he Sajima as this is occurring is in jail um, with 18 counts of murder and as far as Sajima knows Majima just bailed on him and didn't show up the thing is, is that's not what happened. What happened was, and Saijima was in a different um, family than Majima, um, but S Majima was basically like pulled off of the hit by his patriarch and bosses, and he was told, you are not going to go to this hit, and he was like, fuck you, I am, because like my brother is there, and he's going to, I can't let him go do this by himself. Um, and then that's how he lost his eye is that they like basically beat him up, chained him up and stabbed out his eye and then, um, put him in like kind of a torture prison for like a year. So it is, it is a lot of murder. There are updates on that as the games go on, but let's not get too spoilery with what happens. But why does it make him want to go back? The reason why he wants to go back is because... <sighs> because Sajima is still Yakuza. And... If there is a possibility that Sajima could get out of prison... That he, Majima wants to build a place for him to come back to... Within the Yakuza world that they were both in. And so he wants to get back in the Yakuza so he can build something for Saijima to have when he gets out of jail. Yeah, he wants to be... He wants them to be together in the Tojo clan, but he also wants to, like, have made a place for him. Um, and that's that's what he's trying to do. So it's really about his, like, bond and, and you know, with Saijima. Okay. <laughs> Hey, there's some new writing under my reply, and it's the same handwriting. It is very sweet. What do you like? She wrote back. Guess you can't ignore the networking potential of public toilets. So, uh, what do I write in reply? Uh, let's try... I guess the Yaka does, doesn't employ a lot of therapists. You would guess correctly. Uh, I wear a suit at work. I don't like the other two. I wear a suit at work. There. <laughs> Just telling it like it is. That other do. Do not want to write. I'm a sex crazed pervert on the wall. I'll drop by to see if she says anything back to me later. Alright. Hi, what's your deal? Man standing quietly. Dot, dot, dot. Huh? Oh, he hangs his head in sadness. This guy's been staring at that mom and boy this whole while. Man with a stranger's face. Excuse me. Can you throw me my ball, please? Sure. Got it. Oh, no. Wait, please. Huh? Hmm? That that ball, may I? Uh -huh. huh? What? Can I have my ball, please? Yeah, coming right up. Here it goes. Ah. Whoa. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Oh. What's with this weirdo? Yeah, pretty dejected all of a sudden. He has a weirdo story to tell you. No. Hey, what's got you all down in the dumps? Did you want to throw the ball or something? Oi. Yes, very much so. <clears throat> Surely you don't need to be that despondent over it. You're making me feel all guilty over here. I, I just wish I could have played catch with him, even if it was just that one throw. Why him? Thank you for being so kind. 
Thanks for getting my ball. Uh-huh. You keep at it, kid. You'll be in the pros. <laughs> Bye-bye, misters. Bye-bye. I ain't old enough to be a mister. What's the matter? Why are those two so fascinating to you? You have nothing to do with this. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to tell you. See? Therapist. Those two? They're my wife and son. Huh? What? What are you talking about? You're obviously just a random guy to both of them. It's because my wife and son can't recognize me. <laughs> what? How is that possible? Six months ago, my face was surgically altered. Yes! We're... Okay, so now we're introducing the concept of the face job. Surgically altered? What for? I can't get into details, but it was Yakuza related. A little bit of trouble. A little bit? Not so sure about that. The real me is officially dead. Now I live as Kigo Akatani with a new face and identity. So you are forced into assuming another life. What's your real name? The man I was is now dead. Akatani is my real name now. I'm sorry. Nick Cage and John Travolta aren't going to show up, are they? N no. Not. No, they're not. But, listen. I just... I feel like no one is exploring the... The, like... You know what? I'll finish this and then I will talk about face jobs because I, I have had... I have thoughts. <laughs> I have so many thoughts. Man, that's complicated. Just imagine it. I can tell you went through a hell of an ordeal. Yes. At first, it was a shock every time I saw this stranger's face in the mirror. There's no one in the world who can recognize me for who I was. That realization made me want to... Uh... I don't really want to... Okay. I fought the urge for a long time. But then I remembered my family. That mom and boy. Yes. But I'm a total stranger to them now. The best I can do is watch them from afar, like you saw me doing. Oh, of course you have to make a face-off joke. Do you want me to do the face-off thing? And I talk like Nicolas Cage? Because I have a face-off thing. And I will do it. Can't you just tell your wife and son about what happened and go back to them? If only I could do that. The real me is supposed to be dead. I doubt they would believe my outlandish story. Of how I took my face off. Face off. Yeah, that movie rules. Even if I could convince them. I don't know if they could accept me with a stranger's face. <laughs> Besides, I'm deep in the underworld. Deep enough to attract the kind of trouble that makes a man change his face. Just by being around me. Those two could be in danger. It's better I just watch them from a distance. Gotcha. Man, now I'm really sorry I threw that ball back to your boy. Yeah. Please don't worry about it. I'll wait for another opportunity. It's gotta be tough for you. Take care, huh? Thank you. You're the first person I spoke with truthfully since my face was altered. If you don't mind, may I ask your name? It's Majima. It would be nice if I could chat with you again sometime, Majima-san. Well, I should be going. I think I saw a face off once when I was off my face. Well, there's like no other better way to see it, to be honest. All right. I'm gonna take some bait. Oh, put this away. Do not need. Oh no, it's the guy! Ah!
<laughs> Try getting me now. Maybe I should fight him. I have no money. What's up, bro? Oh, you're not gonna? Alright. Fine. Huh? Oh, it's new Varish guy. Hi. <laughs> oh, not even close. Very nice. It ain't right, he says. I say, it's all right. Oh. Hmm. Uh. Oh, vending! It's a dream machine. Insert a million yen to make your dreams come true. Um, I don't have a million yen right now. Sorry. How do I get out of here? Always confuse. Oh, here they are. These guys. Ooh, that is a significant improvement. Very nice. So basically, I was just going to say, the, like, absolute, like, disruptive power of living in a universe where the face-off machine exists. Because, like, what else is a face job if not just the face-off machine, right? Like, or I guess, I don't know, I didn't think about it as much when it came to, like, Mission Impossible or whatever. What's this guy's deal? Oh, right, the forger guy. Right, right, right. Um. Oh, there's a drunkard. But, like, so the thing in Mission Impossible also, where they have, like, the masks that, like, perfectly look like someone's face, and then you can, like, rip the mask off, and it's just, like, I don't know, something about, like, the peeling the face off is just, like, yee. Yee! <laughs> at least, at least in Face Off, they don't show you that. But it's just like, I don't know. I mean, it's it's the same kind of deal, right? It's like, I bet Jeff Jeff Bezos would love a new face, so he can't tell him to pay his damn taxes anymore. I mean, he doesn't give. He don't gotta give a shit either way. Um. But, just like the, the absolute wild chaos power, like the chaoticness of being in a world where like, you don't know if someone is really the person that you are talking to. Because like, they could have had a face job, and it's like, it's not likely if it's surgery, it seems like it'd probably be pretty unlikely. But if it's just a face-off machine, then, like, I don't know, maybe it's more likely. You just want him to pay his taxes? Yeah, I mean, I agree that he should pay his taxes because fuck that guy. Um, for real. Ooh. Ooh. You would have to have a password with everybody, and then, like, this is such a shitty draw. I can't believe he did this to me. Like, what if somebody knew, like, what if they found out the password and you just wouldn't know? You'd never know! Like, because there is a part in uh, Yakuza 3 where I was just like they are so gonna bust out the face off machine it is happening and then they didn't like whatever but <laughs> hmm. oh my god I can't believe you gave me three dragons like that it's so rude oh. uh I was like, why am I not... I can't reach because I'm... Not... Tenpai. 
Like, not at all. I mean, I don't even know that I want to use the face-off machine, but, like, do I get an option? Like, can we talk about it? Like, it just raises, it raises so many questions! Discarder Kunia, Marie Azaroa, Speedy, Speedy George! Like, the face-off machine is as universe-disrupting as a time machine would be. Like, as much, possibly more. Would it be more? If it was in a video game, I would at least look up a video of what happened. It did not happen. I was, I was not correct. It was not... Uh, the actual face-off machine, so, um, I was wrong, uh, it was a secret evil twin instead, so, you can see how anybody could make that mistake, um, <laughs> I just, like, this, like, when things get, like, wild and soapy, the more they do that, the more I love it, like, I just, like, I'm just like, just keep, keep going, more, more, give me more, That's what you thought was rude of the game, though? Give us the face-off machine? I mean, I can't disagree with you. I can't. Because who could? Who could disagree with you? No one. No one. Because if they did, they would be wrong. Uh, what do I want to do here? Okay. Alright, so I only need one pair. So I'm just going to keep that. Like, why wouldn't you have a face-off machine if you could? Like, if I was running video games, I, there would be one in every game. I mean, just factually. Because, like, why wouldn't you do that? <sighs> this looks like it's something, and it's and yet it is not. Uh, Alright, what's out already? I should pay... I'm not... Do don't be rude. I'm not dozing off. I know! I want, like, I want someone to, like, fully explore the wacky potential. See, this is why. This is why I say I could write for Riverdale. Because, like, number one, I could. Um, number two, I have at least already, like, several... At least two episodes worth of completely banana pants ideas... So, there's that. Um, I want to, and they should let me. Like, let me write for Riverdale. I would be good. I would be good at it. Because, like, I know no cause and effect has no meaning for me. And why should it? Okay, now I am Senpai. Oh, shit! Look at that! Oh! My version of you said you said your vision, version of Riverdale would be at least as good as what they're doing, and pro at least when I was watching, probably better. I agree, because first of all, the face-off machine in Riverdale. Because why wouldn't you just call it a face job? And then you don't know, and it's like the seat. Well, okay, so where did you stop? You you tapped out when Betty's brother showed up. Which. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> which one? The fake one or the real one? Which time? Also, which time? Because, like... Chick comes... Like, was it the Black Hood season? Was it the... Griffins and Gargoyles season? Or was it the season that Jughead goes to boarding school? The first one. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Well, the <laughs> they, like, had Betty's real brother show up, and he's not dead, so I don't know. Uh, 
But like, what I I can see why you know like, I there's like a, there's a point where I had to like dip on Parks and Rec, um even though you know everybody is like, oh it's so great and blee blee and it, and like they're not wrong right like it is good at like a lot of stuff that it's like trying to do but just like there came a point where I was like you can't just like say the word obesity and smirk and like call that a joke because it's like not that's not how jokes work like that's not what a joke is that's not what they do um yeah that makes sense um Well, with that in mind, um, I should tell you that Qu that in Kwame 1, there is a major through point in the story that um, Kiryu ends up uh, adopting a, a little girl. And um, that is a big part of the story. Uh, actually, it's a big part of Kiryu's story from then on. Um... So, is he nice to her and they have a nice time? He is very nice to her with one exception where there is, um, there is a point where Kiryu gets, he loses control of himself in a point and he slaps her. And I was very upset by that, but it is, it is one time. I will tell you if you're in the stream so you can dip if you need to, like, not see it. I will obviously warn everybody before it happens because it was, like, kind of shocking and not what I was expecting from him. Um, but other than that, he basically, like, lives his whole life for this girl. Um, and, like, she is the daughter of, like, his lost love. And so he, like basically gives up everything so that she can be happy um except for that one point where he does like he does strike her like one time um so there's that It is it is incredibly sweet and beautiful and if you're sensitive to the 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 hitting issue because like I I grew up um in not a very not a very good situation with my parents which is why we're estranged so um I if I was in a stream and following it I would have appreciated like the heads up just so it wasn't like a shock um, so I definitely will do that when we come to that. It's not until Kwame 1, though, so we've got, like, tons of time. Um, and the, the way that, like, I think the thing that is even, like, incredibly even more sweet with, like, Haruka, which is his, um, his adopted daughter, is that, like, she 100% absolutely, like, always has Kiryu's number. Like, she always is just, like... No, that's not right. And you said this, and this is what we should do. And he's, and a lot of times he's like, "You're right," which I think. Oh my god, I can't believe this guy runned me. No, I'm glad you said something because that's not some. The 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 slapping obviously like my plan was to you know to warn for that no matter what but like i um it hadn't occurred to me that um that like uh adoption scenarios might be something that people would want like you know sort of pre-explained um and like obviously i'm totally happy to do that um and then you know so that people can like make the right decisions for themselves um because like there's some stuff with like um kind of religious abuse stuff where I'm just like I gotta go I can't watch this it's too much you know like when um G when that movie like uh from like god it was ages ago like Jesus Camp came out um a lot of people 
knew that I had like oh. grown up in the uh, Southern Baptist Church, and they were like, "Oh, you've got to like watch Jesus Camp," and I was like, "No, I do not want to. I I can't even tell you how much I don't want to do that." Um, because like I grew up in that world like you need to see what it's like I don't you know like I know what it's like like I it's not I don't want to see it you know because it's just it's gross it brings up bad memories it makes me feel upset and then I'm, I'm also kind of like you know I think people just don't think you know, sometimes I think just people just don't think. They're like, oh, I saw this thing and, like, it made me think of you. And I'm just kind of like, that's cool. But, like, mm, I don't know. Maybe not in, maybe don't think of me in this way. <laughs> um, Because the thing I think that's, like, really frustrating about the, like, evangelical stuff is, like, I so far down oh. I like want people to Beach it. like I don't know do more than just like point and stare at it like I want people to like <sighs> I want to like try to come to a world where we like understand that this kind of religious extremism is is a problem in our own country in the United States like you know we are t like sort of grown up and are taught to think of this as something that happens in other places and that's not that's not 100% true you know I mean like obviously and that like it's not something that people recognize People in the United States don't recognize the dangers of it. Um, and they don't recognize it as something that needs to be... <sighs> ...dealt with. And, and it's like, if you can't, you can't solve a problem, you can't name, you know? Um, like, if you can't get people to see that it's a problem, then there's no way to solve it there's no way to um fix it or even begin to try to fix it if it is fixable because you can't even get people to agree that it really is dangerous and and it's like because there's sort of two types of danger that go along with that there's the danger of what it represents politically um and has represented in the last like 40 years but then there's like also the danger of like it is da isn't it dangerous to a for people who have sort of openly stated that their whole deal is like child abuse like is that not dangerous to like let these people like do the things that they say they want to do um and I just don't see people taking that seriously. Even, you know, queer people don't, like, I think if they're not, like, from that world, don't necessarily take it as seriously as I wish that they would. And it's just really hard because, like... You know, because the things that evangelical Christians believe are, like, ridiculous. They're, like, absolutely ridiculous. And, like, no reasonable person believes this junk. Like, everyone's just, like, obviously no. And, you know, and that's fair. And that makes sense. And, like, obviously I agree or I wouldn't have left, you know. Um, like, clearly, yes. Like, these people are, you know, not... <laughs> at the very least not dealing with <laughs> rationality they're not dealing with the same set of facts as everyone else and <sighs> Mr. Abel, I think it's a bad extension of religious freedom where we have this cultural idea that it is insensitive to criticize someone's religion personally I think that ends when you're hurting someone else yeah I definitely agree um I think that like 
I mean, the thing about religious freedom is that, like, the things... Evangelicals are very good at, like, screaming about the things that they're doing, like, that other people are doing it to them, right? So, like, to an evangelical, religious freedom is the freedom to, like, discriminate against queer people. Like, that's what passes for religious freedom. And it's like, no... No, that's not it. Like, you know, and there's no, like, accounting for, like, what about my religious freedom as a queer person who is not religious to, like, not have anything to do with your crap and, like, just leave me out of it, you know, at the... Even if we don't do anything... And there are... I do believe there are things that can be done to help, especially the queer children of evangelicals. Like, for one thing, free college... Um, would do so much. It would do. It would be everything. I mean, it wouldn't be like the whole ball game, but it would be a significant chunk of it, because you could just be like, you just gotta wait it out. You just gotta wait it out, and then you'll be able to get out of there, you know. And that like it would give people like some hope. Um, but. Everyone, you know, the Democrats want to be like, well, what if, what if a rich person's kid gets some financial aid? And I'm just like, okay, for one thing, ooh, spinning. Ooh. Hello. Like, for one thing, uh, rich people don't send their kids to state schools, let's be honest. Uh, so just like whatever um, yes it would and it should I mean like it would help anybody in an like abusive like situation hi demonomaniac you know like and the, th the thing, too, is it's, like, all of these, like, discussions about, like, what should or shouldn't be done for the, like, children of rich people. There's no legal rights to your parents' money, right? Like, I, I know this. I am queer. I had queer friends in school. I had a number of them have to drop out because their parents found out, and that was the end of the money. And they were just like, fuck you. You're done. We don't pay tuition anymore. Fuck you. Came and took the damn furniture out of the apartment. I mean, just, like, vicious. You know, and it's just, like... <sighs> people have no idea, like, what... What homopho homophobic and, and transphobic parents are capable of. Like, people have no idea, like, what, you know, evangelical parents are capable of. Because, like, they'll just set you out. And be like, you're not family no more, get out. You know, and it's just like if people had a place that it, it would do a lot for like queer homelessness. Like if you had a place to go, you could, you know, go to school, get in a dorm, get a food pass. Like that's everything. That's everything you need for years. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, I, I know that's why you were mentioning her. I, um, I am, I feel very bad for her. I have not been able to, like, really watch the things that have come out with, um, with Claudia Conway because it's just, it's just too upsetting, um, to see these things. And, um, I, I, I worry about her. I worry a lot about, about her. Because, like, I, I have been there, you know. And, um, like, just the incredible, incredible bra bravery to have, like, put that online in the first place was unreal. Yeah, she deserves to be safe. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, what is CPS, right? What is DHS? Like, the Child Protective Services. <laughs> what are they? Like, they are a tool to punish poor people. Because, like... You know who you know who they aren't doing anything about? The Conways. Because they're rich and they're white. And so if you're rich and you're white, you can abuse your kids on fucking national platforms and no one cares. No one will do anything. It's nothing will be done. 
And, like, even if something was done, where could she go? Like, the foster system is, like, doesn't do right by kids. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> it it's supposed to help kids, and it doesn't. And... <laughs> And in a lot of cases, it's used to, like, threaten poor people. And, and like, no one... I mean, just, like, people should care what happens to the children. You know, when I was... You know, it's, it's just, like... <laughs> I had friends in high school who were in foster care. They deserved better than they got. You know, they were kids. And that, like, you know... I wish there was like <sighs> Yeah. Stravel says if you don't have enough money to care for your kids, we'll take so we'll take them and the mo and give the money to some other fam give them the kids and the and some money to another family. Just give the first family the money. I agree. I mean you know, I <laughs> It's like everything in this country is just like centered around punishment unless you're rich and then there's no rules <laughs> it would protect against pull pull yourself up by your own bootstraps parents and controlling parents will only s support your education if you study what they pick yeah look at him oh look at his face Hello. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> I mean, because, like, <laughs> if your parents, if, you're, if your parents are in a position where, according to the government, they can put a certain amount of money towards your education, and let's say they don't because they tell you to go fuck off, or, like, they can't because, like, the sis the formulas are bad or there's, like, four other kids or whatever's going on or there's, you know, whatever's going on is going on. And, like, there's no way around that. Like, I mean, and especially in cases where your parents are just like, hey, hey, go fuck yourself. There's <laughs> literally almost nothing you can do. Um, it is, it, and especially just depending on where you are. Um, in some places, I think it's easier to get adjudicated to be, like, independent, but, like, not everywhere. I don't even know how to say, is that axolotl? I mean, as aside from massive student loans that could ruin your future. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, is, like, even stuff, like, where I went <laughs> to school... Um, is when I was a sophomore in college, my parents moved to Indonesia, which is like, <sighs> that's the whole thing. And it's, I, I'm just like, uh, I don't, do I have time to get into them going to Indonesia? No, I don't think so. But, um, oh, cool. I said it right. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's what happened. And I was in college and... <laughs> My sister w was also in college. And, um, so when, um, school would be out, like, for spring break, Thanksgiving break, etc. I didn't really have anywhere to go. Um, I had, I had a, a there was some stuff with, I had another set of relatives, and then I managed to get sideways with them. Uh, I would claim also not <laughs> not my fault, but um, you know, like 
whatever. Like, anyway, I didn't want to go there. And so I was, like, functionally homeless uh, during school breaks. And, like, because I was living in the dorms. And, you know, because I would, like, I would do, like, summer school. Sometimes I would stay, um, I would stay with people. Couldn't do that whole summer. But, um, like, <laughs> it's it's just, like, unless you lived in the international student dorm, you, like, were not allowed to stay in your dorm <laughs> if, like, school was not in session. And it's just, like, I... <sighs> Are you, you're telling me I gotta, like, get out of here. And, like, do what? <laughs> like, I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> and so, you know. Yes. Couch surfing. Like. <laughs> and it's just, like, I just think that, like, people... The people setting up these, like, systems, right? It feels like we really hate children and young people in this country. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think, like... I think there's two, like, problems at the root of that. I think one of them is that, in many ways, like, we treat children like they are property that their parents own. Um... Which I do not agree with, and I think, you know... There are age-appropriate ways to, like... Hey! It's an eel! I think there are age-appropriate ways to, like, check in with children and, like... Because they have personalities and preferences because they're people. If you just start treating someone like they're a person when they're 18... And you don't, like, ever ask them anything or, or let them have any say until then... Like, how are they supposed to know how to be an adult? But, I, you know, like, legally, children kind of are a type of property. Um, and, like, like in a lot of ways. Not in every way, but... You know, and pa parents can decide a lot of things that it doesn't really seem, like, right. That they're able to, like, make certain decisions or, you know, override things that their children want. And, you know... I think that there are age-appropriate ways that, like, to take children's wants and, you know, into consideration. Ooh, crowded. Um. But, like, we just don't do that. And this sort of... And I think the other root of the problem is that there's this default assumption in <laughs> the default assumption in the culture is that your family like that the nuclear family is like good and wholesome right and that it's like um you know everything kind of flows from that and like we have this <laughs> these ideas about like what constitutes family and, you know, like, your family. Because cause there's no safe, especially in the United States, there's no safety nets. There's no, like, there's barely any, like, assistance or anything at all. So it's, like, really what you have are your, like, family networks. Like, that's what you're supposed to be able to count on. But, like, that's not true for everyone, right? And, yes. Oh, I don't got any bait. Okay. So, because that's, like, not true for everybody, um... <laughs> the problem is, is that, like, we operate and set up systems like it is true. <laughs> right? And when you're, like, building a system for, like, a huge population of people, you should take into account the ways that, like, I don't know, things cannot be 100% a, a ideal, right? Like, what what ways can this thing be abused? Like, what uh. ways... Oh, shit, here she is. Where's Aaron Coom? I told him I needed that absorbent sheet, like, now. Boy. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hmm? 
Excuse me? And who are you? Force children to be subservient until they're 18 and then wonder how they don't know how to assert themselves or make decisions as adults. Yeah, I mean, the thing, too, is, like, you don't have... If your parents tell you to fuck off, you don't have the ability to force them to pay. Like, there's no legal ability to force them to do the thing that the government assumes that they're going to do. And everyone knows that. And so this, like, happy schmappy family crap that we, like, have as a culture where we, like, do not want to admit that child abuse happens and that it's happening in the family, right? We don't want to admit that, like, the family is a problem a lot of times for a lot of people. And so we, because we want to put this just, like, happy family cover on the fact that we basically treat certain classes of people like like they don't matter and they're not equal and so like you know children as a class as opposed to their parents are not like treated the same in that there's states where you can be there's states where you can be forced to pay for your parents end of life care like that medicaid pays for you'd be forced to reimburse medicaid for that whether or not you've talked to them in years whether or not like you are estranged from them whether or not they ever gave you a dime for school and it's just like and people have tried to claim estrangement and abuse and in some cases it works and in some cases it doesn't <sighs> It's just like it is a it is wild. It's it just gives this like assumption that like that like children are obligated to pay for parents because parents paid for them. It's like number one, you didn't. Number two, I didn't ask to be born. Number three, like if you're worried about what's gonna happen to my parents, like let's all pay you like okay like let's make sure there's a safety net so so that like people if <laughs> it's not that i want people's abusive parents to die on the side of the road i want there to be a safety net so you don't have to be a nice person to not die <laughs> you shouldn't have to be nice <laughs> to like be allowed to be alive <laughs> okay so I'm going to finish this up, and then that's probably going to be the end of it. Um, and she does have a nice suit. Uh, excuse me, and who are you? Aaron Coon hurt his foot, and he can't run on it, so he begged me to get this to you. You handed over the absorbent sheet. Is that right? Well, whatever works. Thanks. <sighs> hey, how about a little concern for the guy? It don't bother you at, at all that he's in pain? Hmm? Huh? Yo, Emi, what's the holdup? Oh, Tomo-kun. Sorry, Aaron kun was kind of slow today. But this man here brought what we needed, so we're good. <sighs> nice. Man, I was getting really sweaty, too. <laughs> Anything for you, Tomo-kun. You better whip that Aaron kun into shape, though. Gotta give him some tough love so he's never late again. <sighs> no problem. Boy. Hey! What the shit? Hmm? Excuse me? Wasn't it you who requested that? Aaron Coon thought he was doing this for you. So he busted his ass to get it. Huh? Does it matter? What <laughs> Tomo Coon wants? I want too. We're totally going steady now. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Coon's usually good at his job though. Quick, courteous, and free. Of course, he doesn't know we're an item now. Tee hee. These assholes. You don't give a rat's ass about Aaron Coon. Does, doesn't the movie start soon, Tomo Coon? We better go. Oh. Yeah, come on, babe. What? Hey, before you go, I'm gonna need you two to make me a quick promise. Oh? We don't owe you shit, man. What do you want? Aaron Coon has run. Aaron Coon has run his last errand for you. This stops now. You already got plenty out of him. Now let him go and stop toying with his feelings. <sighs> Dude, why would I make a promise like that? A good errand boy is tough to find these days. Huh? You shouldn't talk so big, stick man. Tomokun could f wipe the smirk off your face real easy. <laughs> Sir, you shouldn't talk to Majima like that. It's true, he's about to find out. Really? 
Cause I wipe my ass with guys like Tomo Goon. Uh. <laughs> oh, you wanna get it on? Cool, cool. You you can be my personal errand boy. Then we'll have two. <laughs> <laughs> if you win, I'll run errands for you all over town. Bare ass naked with property of Tomo Kun tattoo. You you're gonna regret talking shit. I sincerely doubt that. I hate people who use others. It's true. It's not cool. Oh, well, that's it for him. Go. Gah! So, what do you say about making that promise? Or do you need more convincing? I will, I will, I promise. I won't ever make him run errands again. I'm so sorry. Wait, Tomokun, what about the movie? <sighs> well, I managed to get him to stop abusing Aaron Kun's generosity. But do I tell him the truth? He fucked around and found out in record time. That is true. Hi. Oh, oh hey, if it ain't Aaron Kun. You okay to be running again? Hi. Yes. A little rest was all I needed. But anyway, did you get the absorbent sheet to her? Uh. Yeah, I made the drop, but... Mm -hmm. But? I'm gonna tell him the truth. <sighs> well, I hate saying this, but that woman actually has a boy. I know! Ugh! You don't need to say anymore. I actually saw her walking around with this handsome looking guy the other day. She looked happy. But I couldn't ask her about him. I was afraid of learning the truth. Aaron Coon? <sighs> Still. Kinda rips your heart out to know for sure. Dot dot dot. But maybe this is the reality check I needed. This is the heartwarming music. I'm not gonna run any more errands for her. Good. That's for the best. Of course, who knows what will happen if I fall for the next girl, but that's just the kind of guy I am. Nothing wrong with being the kind of guy a girl can depend on. Agree. Agree. But it's about respect. If you both have an equal share of it, then nothing can tear you apart. This is very solid advice from Majma. Dot, dot, dot. It should be equal. <laughs> Here's hoping the next lady you fall for treats you with the same love and care you got for her. That's so sweet. And I hope, yes, this is good advice. Hi. Yes. I can't thank you enough. You gave me medicine, these sneakers, and you did so much more. Nah, it ain't much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. No, no, that's simply not true. If I could only repay you for your kindness somehow. Mm. Don't sweat it. My needs are met. <laughs> if there's anything I can do, I'll be happy to do it. For you, I'm really I'm willing to run anywhere. Haha. <laughs> 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 you really got a thing for running. Hi. Yes. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh. Sure. You got it. Mm. Okay. I'll be going now. Oh, he's gonna run errands for me! Ha ha! Hey, I got 10 Majima sub stories and I got a completion point. That's pretty good. You wanna run an errand for me? That seems pretty good. I will. <laughs> sure, that'd be good. Well, Majima treated him with more care and respect than Emmy ever did. That's true. Okay, now I just gotta find a save point and we'll be done. Steamed bun. Okay, so. How do I get. I'm, I have to do the dream machine. I heard a cat, but I don't think you can pet cats in this game. Man, I had that already. I don't think you can pet cats in this one. That's a grave oversight, I feel like. Hi, honey. I love you. Oh, jeez. No! 
No, it's starting this again! <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi. How's it going? Yeah? Thanks for calling me right away on my back phone! It's the back phone guy. What's that clunky ass bag he's slinging? I just, I just want to get out of this. You want to hear about my shoulder bag phone? Oh, no? That's not what you're calling about? Huh. Oh, okay. Sorry. Bag phone? Is that bag actually working as a phone? That's some shit, ain't it? Oh. Alright, I get it. Well, if you ever want to hear about it, you know who to call. I'm the bag phone guy. Okay, bye! Huh. Aw, oh, everyone has a special voice they use for their cats. I know my smartphone is more useful, but I want a bag phone now. <laughs> Man, why doesn't anyone appreciate the awesomeness of bag phones? Well, hun, Miss Dravel does in the chat. <laughs> Don't they know how much I had to beg for this thing? His name is Boy. Guy with a bag phone. Hey, buddy, were you just chatting on that phone through that chunky bag you got there? Pardon? Oh god, my dream has come true! Yes! Exactly! Yes! I was talking using this! That's pretty wild. Is that some kind of radio then? Oh no, not at all. It's a real phone! It's called a bag phone! A bag phone? Who puts a phone in a bag? <laughs> oh, really? You don't know? This is all the rage now. It's a fully transportable mobile telephone made possible through state-of-the-art technology. From now on, people will be able to t carry telephones with them all the time. You'll be able to connect with anyone, anytime, and anywhere. And it was a mistake. And they shouldn't have done it. <laughs> a mobile telephone, eh? Crazy. What's the point of carrying a phone with you at all times? Ah, huh. uh, you're not seeing the bigger picture. With this bad boy, you're not chained to your home or office. You could even turn a cafe into your workplace. You could be in touch with your friends and family at all times. I could call up my mom right now if I wanted. Uh, sure. I guess I could see the use of that. I knew you'd see the light. Is he a time traveler? Uh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't lose a phone that size five times a day. I bet I could lose that. Yep. It's got a strap on it, which is helpful, but I bet I could still lose it. Um, you should... Doesn't it make you want one? You should head to the store and get it to ride the wave of the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. I'm using that thing cost you an arm and a leg. Riding the future always comes with a tax. Actually, yeah, it's more expensive than I should even say. <laughs> Figured as much. I don't see the need. I'll stick to the payphones with the rest of the peasants. Hmm. But weren't you just about to enter a phone booth? Yeah, I was about to make a call. I, I really was. So I see. Heh heh heh. I'm just an ADHD girl standing in front of my things. Wonder where the heck they went. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Very well. I shall let you use the cutting edge of technology, my bag phone, to place your call. I'm not getting out of this. Whoa, you sure about that? Mm. Certainly. I want everyone to experience the future, and this game has no autosave. <laughs> I want everyone to experience the future today. You just need to understand what a bag phone represents. Aren't I generous? A bag phone, huh? Guys, this is state of the art. Do I want to see what it's all about? No! Thanks for the offer, but maybe some other time. Huh? B but it's a bag phone! I'm carrying the future of conversation on my shoulders. And I'm carrying enough spare change to make a call. Huh. Why are the masses so uh, blind? Uh, <laughs> Alright, so he's just going to stand there, and I'm going to actually use the phone phone and save the game. Alright. Thank y'all for coming and hanging out with me on the stream. Miss Dravel, Anton, is uh, Demonomaniac. You guys are awesome. Thank you for chatting. People who came by and didn't chat, thank you so much for coming by and hanging out. 
Um, lurking is rad. Everybody who comes by the stream makes the stream great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll be back tomorrow at five uh, at the regular time, five to seven, and um, then I should be on on Friday. It will be one to five. So we should go back to the next schedule. My cat is having some issues, so um, we're having to be a little flexible right now. So if you uh, see me and I'm not on, I'm either I'm I'm either late and I'm trying. Or um, you can check my Twitter and see if I've said that I um, am moving the day. So that's it for uh, today. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you all. Um, my name is Allie. I'm from Okay To Be Fat because it's Okay To Be Fat. And that's the stream. Bye. Oh, thank you for the vibes. I will, I will give her vibes.